Hollywood Paranormal Detectives. I say it every week. You're damn right we are. Hollywood Paranormal Detectives coming at you. Another week, another Wednesday for some great paranormal chit-chat. Um, we've had a huge investigation this weekend that we're going to film. And we've already filmed. We're editing for our Paraflix season four. So follow that link tree in our bio and go to Paraflix for that season four. It's going to be amazing. I'll tell you now, it was the Kia Mill. Um, the man that followed me to the Kia Mill that uh, helped bust some ghosts for me and Ghostbusters. Here's Brian Ray. Hi. Brian. What a weekend we had, brother. It was fun. Oh my gosh, that Kia Mill. And, and I'm not going to say it was a bit scary. And I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Here is our own, our newest and truest, our own little psychic medium. Not saying it. Man. <laughs> I was like, to say it. I wanted to say our own little groundhog, but I didn't say it. <laughs> you guys, tonight we got the Mike Tyson of the paranormal coming in. The baddest man in the ghost hunt land. I'm going to introduce you in the HPD world. So you can only say his name this way. Matt motherfucking water. That's probably the best intro I've ever had on the show before. I appreciate that. I mean, you can't say it any other way. After you watch a few unpopular opinions, you cannot say it any other way. Yeah, I, um, I think we're overdue for one of those, too. Exactly. There's always stuff to talk. I mean... You're a ghost hunter. You're a personal trainer. You're a fellow Jeep driver. You're a dad. You're about to be a new dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and a certified bad motherfucker straight out of the Bridgewater Triangle. Um, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to chopping it up with you guys. Well, first of all, I had to hold back from talking. I want to tell these guys and tell the world, how did we meet, Matt? We met when we were uh, chosen to be brought out for casting for a top secret paranormal show, uh, as we just figured out three years ago now, uh, yeah. which turned out to be Ghost Hunters, the yeah. reboot. And the um, reboot. we were just too good for them. It's, and they, they it's wanted so weird. A, they just <laughs> wanted something else, and, and that's what they got. <laughs> What's so strange is I remember when we went to the location – the producer guy was kind of like, I think I want you to give me some bagans. I want you to get in there and provoke. I want you to yell. Yeah. I'll and I was that. like, oh I'll do God. that if that's what you want. <laughs> I was walking around that place like, show yourself. You're going to come out and talk to me. You're going to push these. I was screaming. My face was red. Come and then at me, bro. I was, exactly. <laughs> yep. um, and yeah, you, and then, you were paired up with Heather, I think, right? I was paired up with Heather the whole time, and she was just kind of like, why is this guy fucking yelling so much? Yeah, yeah. Um, Hi, Tori. <laughs> oh, we got people on. We got people chatting. Yeah, um, Tori might and, be doing night shift. That's why she's probably up. <laughs> I just found it weird that they told me to go aggressive Bagans, and then they stayed with Ghost Hunters style, which... I, I have my own theories on certain things, and I think a lot of it, when we were out there, I believe that there was, at that point, Jay and Grant were still supposed to do the show. And oh. I think I think that during that whole process, when we were there and they weren't, that that changed. And then they realized, well, we can't have bold personalities because Grant doesn't yeah. carry that type of a that show. That makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it we all could have bounced off shows were perfectly fine. Huh? We all could have bounced with Jay, no problem, because he has that kind of back and forth. But Grant's very calm by the books, and that's not me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what did you think? What did you think of the show that wound up airing? I didn't watch one second of it, <laughs> and I really? won't ever. I, I watched. I tried to watch the first one, and you know, after I woke up, I I tried to watch it again, and I couldn't finish it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love half the people that were on that show, and I still talk to them all. Yeah, that half. Um, it just seemed like they tried to do the same thing. They didn't try to do anything new. Mm -hmm. That's what sort of it hit me with. Yeah. And uh, 
I think if Ashley had been on and you had been on and me, uh, I think Alvarez should have got on. He's he is such a such an enigma in his thirst for the tech. You know, I think his balance with us would have been good. Um, it's just weird the way they went, and I I always wonder about. Me, the you, and Jay season. traveling the country, eating hot wings, busting ghosts, lifting weights. Well, you know, like, if it had gone a different way, the show might still be on. It might not. We'll never really know. It would have yeah. been, been a completely different product. Let's put it that yeah. way. Um, oh. But you can't, you can't go and alienate a fan base of 15, 20 years calling it the same damn show and not having it the same people. And that I think that hurt it too. Yeah, like I mean, some people go to a new class or some crap. Throw some stupid tagline on it. Yeah, and don't pretend you're trying to be the same thing. It would have it would have fared better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I lost faith in A and E anyways when they caved in and got rid of Live PD. So at that point, in time, <laughs> I know that was like Why the best show that? ever. <laughs> that was, I liked Live PD. It was so good. I Never saw it. Oh, well, don't go really? looking for it now because you'd be upset you can't watch it anymore. Hey, Jenny. <laughs> um, so I want to dive right into it. Uh, what was your first paranormal experience? So I remember growing up, um, I had a couple of little experiences when I was a, a kid that I kind of brushed off, like kid experiences you don't really think much of. Yeah. Um, but I guess the, the experience that got me into it full bore, knowing damn well there's something else out there, I was about... 19 years old and at that point in time all the shows had come out like ghost hunters and things like that had come out and i grew up with like unsolved mysteries and sightings and then ghost hunters came out and i was like oh wow there's more people out there that like this stuff and at the time the internet wasn't even the thing so i used to just get books from the library get books for wherever i could and i used to research as much as i could i got the hans holzer's books all over the place and, and things like that and some of the warren's books there was a book that I have, and I believe it was in Weird, Massachusetts, those books that every state has one of. Oh, yeah. It was either yeah. Weird, Mass, or Weird, New England, one of those. And it spoke of this, this road near where I live. And it was just a paragraph, little tiny paragraph. And it was one of those deals like, um, as Stephen mentioned, I live in within the Bridgewater Triangle, which is a 200-square-mile yes. area of Massachusetts that if anything paranormal can happen, it does happen. It's just oh, one okay. of those hotbeds. It was coined that in the 70s by Lauren Coleman, famed cryptozoologist. So growing up here, now as an adult and realizing all these things, it kind of makes more sense why I experienced what I have. But this road itself, um, it was about a mile long and it cuts through a really, really nice, rich, rich neighborhood. And then the second half of the road's like one and a half lanes wide, kind of rough paved. And it cuts through former uh, Native American reservation land, which basically this whole country was native land anyways at some point. Like, yeah. Uh, before it got taken from them but so it's just protected state forest so to speak and it cuts through to this other main road now the reports on this road were if something could happen there it would you'd have reports of bigfoot alien giant thunderbirds uh totems all kinds of stuff so being a bored teenager i had nothing better to do and I didn't really, <laughs> my friends weren't really into this stuff and that's why like a lot of people like oh i didn't know you've been doing it this long so yeah because i didn't have anyone to do it with i just kind of yeah hung out yeah. and just yeah. kicked around by myself like a lot of us did and we um i would just drag my friends up and down this damn road all the time like we probably went up there no lie a hundred times before anything actually happened and one night i got out of work i worked part-time nights um so i was out of work usually about 8 8 30 at night and i picked up my buddy who was the biggest chicken shit out of all my friends <laughs> uh, but we hung out all the time together so we we're heading down there and it was january and it was a really warm January for New England. There's no snow or anything like that. It was like 50 degrees. So, like, for us, that's summertime. Yeah. And so we're heading down there. I said, hey, you know what I was thinking, dude? I was thinking um, when we get down on the road tonight, I'm going to stop in the middle and just kind of turn the lights off and stuff and see if anything happens. Like, oh, boy. <laughs> don't, don't do that to me, dude. All right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm that friend. Sure. So we drive down there, cutting through the rich part of the neighborhood. We roll the windows down and – Creeping through that part of the road. And that part of the road is probably half a mile long, give or take. It doesn't take much time to get through. But cut through. When we get to the end, what we would do is we'd turn around and come back the same way so that we get a double take. Because uh, mm -hmm. it was like you know, a 20-minute ride from where I lived, which was nothing anyways back then. But um, So as we're coming back, 
I get about halfway through the abandoned, so so to speak, part of the road, and I bring my 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 truck to a stop. I'm just putting my foot on the brake, and my buddy's like, "Ah, oh, dude, don't 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 do this to me. Don't do this to me." I was like, "Ah, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it." You know? <laughs> Never put it in park or anything like that. Just brought it to a stop. I turned the lights off. The second that I turned the lights off on the truck, I see two hands like this on the hood of my truck, all white. I see up the arm. I see white to the shoulders. I never saw the head because I bugged out. I flipped the lights on as fast as I could. I floored it, and my truck won't move. Oh, my it's God. It's just spinning as if it's actually being held in place by whatever the crisis is. <laughs> and after what? what seems like an eternity, the truck finally moves, but it doesn't go forward. It goes to the side as if something just kind of shoved it. Oh. And now the truck is going at a, a crazy rate of speed, and I'm what? jerking the wheel back and forth trying to stay on this little narrow road. He's yelling at me on the side, dude, don't do this. Don't do this to me. Don't do it. I'm like, dude, I can't. I'm not even doing this. Like, I'm just <laughs> oh, all I do <laughs> hold on to the wheel. I'm able to bring the wheel back and get the truck to stay on the road before I hit this massive tree. And we got through that neighborhood at probably 60, 65 miles an hour <laughs> through the main road, get to the main road, drive another mile or so to like civilization with lights and shit. I pull over and I was like, what? What did you see? And he goes, I saw a woman in a white dress with her hands on the hood of your truck. And I said, that's exactly what I saw too. Oh shit. You both um, saw it. Okay. We both saw it. And, and, and he's not to this day been back down to that road. Um, oh, like I said, not a ghost dude, never was, never will be still like traumatized by this shit. And he's not a padded cell, but he, he'll bring it up once in a while. Be like, Man, this, <laughs> I'm never going down there. And I didn't go back yeah. for like five years. I mean, it was, it took a lot out of me and wow. Like that was wow. early day of cell phones too. I had like this cool yellow flip phone that I, I got. I called my mom. I was like, you don't believe this because she, she was always cool with that stuff. So her and her boyfriend used to drive up and down the road too. And one time my friend actually dropped us off in the woods there and we jumped out and scared the shit out of him. Oh so my God. Like, oh, well, there's, there's karma <laughs> for me right there because I shouldn't have done that mom. But it was, uh, that changed my whole perspective on everything at that wow. point. Like, there's a lot Would of things you, uh... out there. Would you credit that experience with your becoming an investigator? 100%. Yep. Wow. Yep. And that was, uh, I'm dating myself now, but that was like 21 years, 22 years ago. Wow. So it, it, it sparked something inside of me. Like it was, a, it was something I was always fascinated with. I grew up loving horror movies and then, you know, Ghostbusters came out and all that stuff. So I was always yeah. engrossed in that aspect of fear. And then the ghost thing, my grandparents' house was haunted and, I, although I never had experiences there, they always talked about it. So it was always accepted in my family. I was never shunned or anything like right. that. So well, that's good. Um, but yeah, once that happened, I said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to really dive into this stuff. And I just didn't meet the like-minded individuals and become a part of the field until like four or five years ago. And that's, that's when everything got good. Cause I was like, yeah. oh, there's a lot of weirdos like me that I can kind of power. <laughs> <out there." laughs> Find your tribe. Yeah. And here we are. Oh my God. I, that's enough. I think I sort of remember that story now when she started saying the truck, but man, I, I, there's nothing better than those stories. Steve Broad's story. My hair stood on end. That one. I just, my heart sunk when you said it. Um, <laughs> we talked about it for a second before. Um, on your YouTube channel, you do a thing called Unpopular Opinion, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a brave thing to do because you're not afraid to kind of say what you mean and kind of say the things that need to be said. And even though the paranormal field is a small community, there are problems inside of it. Tell us what kind of – what was the straw that broke the camel's back that made you start Unpopular Opinion? Oh, I have to think back on that one. Because um, Hollywood paranormal detectives were so full of shit. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what started all that because what I did in the beginning was I would do little three to five minute pre-recorded rants yeah, um, about things that I noticed in the field. Like We all know the field right now especially is a toxic cesspool. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's as bad out there at West for you guys, but it is horrific out here. And I feel like we people, kind of exist outside of it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah kind of, I, I, we're kind of our own thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing you're doing, it, you're doing it the right thing. I, drama follows me anyways i can't i can't unfortunately help that um i don't know what the hell i did to deserve that but <laughs> at this point i just welcome it laugh it off and you know yeah but um i did one i've done a couple of them live like a as a live like jerry springer-esque type of unpopular opinion and invited guests on and i said <laughs> if you've got if you've got some shit to air out this is your platform and 
The last one I did scared so many people because I was like, it's time to name names. And I named a few people that have been pissing me off in the field. And I had other, I had for the same four or five people that came on air, I had 20 people that messaged me leading up to it. I want to be on. I've got this, this, and this to say. And then they backed out at the last minute. Oh yeah. They don't want to say names. (laughs) People are, people are scared of that. And I, and I understand that. And, but I had both sides of the coin. People like, Oh, you know, that's great. You do that. And then there's other people, Oh, you, you know, you get sued for this. I'm like, no, I can't like, Facts are facts. If someone's a piece of shit. Would you assume me because you're a piece of shit? No. Like, <laughs> it, it is what it is. I'm not going to go on here and be like, oh, you know, I heard this and that. It's like, no, these are the facts. Like, you screwed me over at XYZ. You're a douchebag. Move on. <laughs> like, and yeah. the last one was spurned, actually. I tried to get something going with, um, I forget what had happened. I got screwed over at a Paracon that I was invited up to be a guest at. And when I got there, I was turned away. What? Um, it was a shitty oh. misunderstanding, but the way they handled it was just not cool. So that's what sparked that for me. I was like, all right, the hell with it. I'm going to go live with this. And yeah. like I said, I had a lot of other yeah. people that wanted to say some things that they never said, but that's, that's totally cool too. And oh. a lot of people I think are scared to burn bridges and think I'll build my own bridge. I don't, I'll burn everyone I walk over at this point. I don't, that's, I feel like we're an island. We're just making yeah. stuff on our own. We've never been to a convention and everyone we reach out to is cool to us. And mm-hmm. so that's sort of why we started this talk show was to try to meet more people in the community because we feel like no one's in California but us and Patty Negri. Like yeah. so we're just <laughs> reaching out to people, trying to <laughs> spread out and just make friends or enemies. We'll see what happens. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, it's just we should all be working together in some fashion, at least in a supportive oh, manner. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean you have to like everybody, but we're all trying for the same stuff here. Absolutely, absolutely. And the the, the mo- I've always got fame and money. Just- What's that? I said fame and money. <laughs> That's why I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never shied away from that. Either. People hate me when I'm like, yeah, I want to be on TV. They're like, oh, you're in it for the wrong reasons. I'm like, I didn't know my reasons had to be validated by you. Like, I want to be on TV yeah. so I don't have to work a normal job and I can do this thing I love mm-hmm. and get paid for it. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a bad gig to me. I just like when people say. All the ghost hunters are in it for the money. I'm like, who's making money other there's than no Megan and Jason? Right. <laughs> there's, 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 all those dudes are still working their regular jobs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You make your money on the convention circuit, but you also burn out your life that way. So it's, it's not glamorous by any means. I just want to travel for free. That's all I'm, I'm looking for out of life. Yes. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. And <laughs> I know people can't handle that straightforwardness. Um, but that's something that's always irritated me. Like, people like, telling you what what the reasons you do the paranormal should be that's I, yeah. everybody, everybody yeah. you know, well, if you're not well, doing everyone it to help projects people, it yeah yeah if you're not doing it to help people you're not for the wrong reasons i'm sorry i don't want to help anyone this isn't what i do this for like i well, that's my day job exactly yeah. like this is my hobby for me that i enjoy having fun with hanging out with friends mm-hmm. and running around like an idiot in the dark trying to see ghosts like that's what i enjoy and what kind of harm can you actually do yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, if you're not doing residentials to help people, so I don't want to do a residential. I'll we, take that right now. Like we've said it know. last week, we've never. I think because it used to be me, Brian, and Boom, just three guys with beards. Like we've never been invited to a private, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like no one wants three guys in their house they don't know. Like we've never once been approached Are to do a private sure? investigation. <laughs> I've I've had probably about a half a dozen or so over the past few years, and. The thing that I've found more often than not is all these people want their house to be haunted. They just want yeah. that stigma. Yeah. So basically we go in and debunk and then we're assholes. Uh, it's like, no, well, yeah. sorry, your house isn't haunted. Yeah. You're just a psycho, you know, but I just, I just refer out now. I'm like, no, nah, we don't do those. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm that prototypical thrill seeker that the, most people hate. Like, oh, you, you just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. I'm waiting to be face to face with someone I know that cannot be there and have them disappear in front of me. Like, yeah. that's what I want. I've got all these little shadows I've chased and sounds I've heard, but I want to, like, lock eyes with something and be like, oh, shit, I know you're impossible. I know you're gone. <laughs> I'm like, that's it? I'll be all like, get her. Yeah. <laughs> get her, Ray. That's all you got? Get her. That's what you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was like, when I, I was just investigating a couple weeks back, and I we're in a basement, and I said, you know, one of these days I'm going to walk around the corner and have that. That, that yeah. major experience that, where I capture that just that whole figure just standing there. And then I'm done. I don't even care anymore. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to capture my holy grail and then be good with it. You know? Well, the I mean, worst, I think, is if you don't capture it. If you see it, you're like, my camera was off. 
That's the worst. Well, I mean, how many times does that happen to all of us? That's you always know, yeah. the way it happens. Yeah. Well, and I have stuff on camera, but the shadow's not there. Like Pioneer Saloon, I chased that cowboy around the corner, and I was running and filming, and he's not on the count on the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Mandy, well, thank you, you Tori. Sorry, Tori said that she will keep us in mind. So, yes, oh. please do. I'd be intrigued. Tori runs something called the Paranormal Help Desk, which is like a great big network of teams throughout the country, and I think she's I think she's outside of the country too with it, but. Uh, Whenever some, someone can go to this hub and find teams to help out where they're at. And we'll like I, said, I, would, I would love to do that. The The scariest places I've ever been are when you go to someone's house. I remember we were filming a music video for Gay Bartalis and the house we were filming in, the lady goes, well, don't go upstairs. It's really haunted and it's really evil. <laughs> and we filmed the right video back. and I walked up there and I was like, I got to get out of here right now. Like, is that bad, huh? It was, I mean, I didn't have any equipment. I was just by myself. And I go, I'll go check out the upstairs. And, like, I got to the top of the stairs. And it was just, oh, shit. Like, I'm surrounded by <laughs> death and evil. Like, run. Um, now, did you ever try to go back? No. It was a, it was way up in the mountains. And we were filming uh, some music video where a monster eats an old lady. But, uh <laughs> It was because it was a <laughs> private residence that someone for no purpose said, don't go upstairs. Uh, yeah, it was. That terrible. curiosity would eat at my soul for the rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, I, it, I think about <laughs> it. I, I've tried to look up the call sheet and everything. And I, I can't remember where it was. Yeah. <laughs> Gabe would know. Gabe, Gabe might know. I can reach out to Gabe. I have two questions. Um, okay. First one, what is your unpopular opinion number one? Um, and two, what would be your biggest pet peeve in paranormal? So the question about unpopular opinion, uh, can you elaborate more? Um, well, you, you put out like these unpopular opinions. Um, is there one that you're just like, Oh, uh, what's the number one? What's the number one? Like a, you cannot change your mind. This is how you feel. It's probably like it, it's probably, and this kind of ties into the pet peeve. But I have a different pet peeve that is getting even more lately. The, my biggest unpopular opinion is the, the reasoning for people doing the paranormal. That has always chapped my ass okay. sideways. Um, I don't think anyone has the right to tell anyone why they should be doing their hobby. Yep. Yeah, exactly. you know, it, it, it's not like we're all a bunch of doctors that went to school and have an education in what we're trying to do, and we're getting paid. We're all hobbyists using equipment that's not made for ghosts because ghosts technically aren't real, according to most people. We're using equipment that's used for plumbing and, and, and air quality tech, you know, stuff that just may do something. It's yeah. all theoretical. But yet we chop each other down at every every turn as if one moron's technique is different than this moron's technique. We all look dumb <laughs> to the average person. Yeah. At yeah. the end of the day, we should just embrace it and just say, hey man, how, how'd your ghost hunt go today? Did you guys have any luck? But yeah. people can't people yeah. can't put their egos aside, and I'm accused of having a huge ego. Like, I love myself. I don't really care. I'm not gonna. I'm not afraid to admit it. But like, mm -hmm. I just try to be a good person, you know, and just enjoy life. And people view that differently. So, um, I'd say that's probably my main unpopular opinion is the reasons for people doing the paranormal. It's nobody's wow. business why someone else is doing the paranormal. A hundred percent agree. And then uh, my biggest pet peeve currently is just the unnecessary drama. Yeah. It's like Mean Girls and Heather's had this mutant baby and we're all stuck in limbo and every day is the same day at high school. It's like Monday every day at high school all over again. That's so it's true. Groundhog Day. I hate it. It is. It's Paranormal Groundhog Day. And it comes from all directions and it, it, you know, it doesn't always involve me, obviously. Like I just, I have these people that just don't leave me alone. Um, but they're drama queens, these people. And mm -hmm. it spreads like a disease. And I see, I, I'll scroll Facebook and Facebook just drives me crazy now because it seems like, yes, I obviously have a lot of paranormal friends on there. That's kind of my hub. Mm -hmm. But I scroll, it's like, does anyone do anything else? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, miss, I, I remember five or six years ago, people used to complain because everyone posts pictures of their kids and their, their dinner. It's like, I want to go back to that. Yeah. I like seeing I like seeing your home cooked shitty meal much more than your opinion on ghosts. I'll tell you that. So well, it's funny. I was I was on I was on looking at one of those. Uh, it might have been a ghost hunters like group on the, and uh, somebody had posted you know a picture, 
and everybody was you know post was giving their theories and stuff and then someone clearly pointed out it's it's you know against the rules to you know to like you know mock some mock the photo or mock somebody's thing or tell them you know it's like what do you mean you can't you can't try to debunk somebody's fucking fo- you, ghost if photo? you post that photo up asking for someone's opinion be prepared for it for opinions yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's that's like probably one B for me with with pet peeves. I forgot about that one. Those stupid like, what do you see in this picture? I don't see shit in your picture. There's, wow. in your picture. There's not a damn thing in your picture except some out of focus dust or or your face over in the corner so or a lens flare or reflection. There's nothing going on in your picture. That's what well, they say. If, if you got to put a pick, if you got to put a circle on it, it's not there. You yeah. shouldn't look at it and but go, oh shit. My favorite is the camera strap vortex. It's oh yeah! So <laughs> oh, it, it, it's. I just scroll now. I used to. I used to add my two cents, but I just can't be bothered anymore. What uh, I, I think is neat when people uh, they debunk every piece of equipment. No piece of equipment's good. Mm-hmm. Like, and they hate. They hate any piece of evidence from any equipment. And then those same. The opposite is spiritual people who only accept spiritual stuff, but. Yeah. None of us are as good as like an old lady who sees something by accident. Like, yep. <laughs> Jesus. Like I always okay. say, no one was ever like, "Well, tell us your eyewitness story." Well, I was alone with a spirit box and a night vision camera, and I just accidentally saw this ghost. Like, that's yep. never the story. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that that happens far too often. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't deal with some of these people anymore. It's getting so tiring. And yeah, God love them for trying, but man, they just—I I don't know. And see, we kind of like everyone says you're either tech or spiritual, you know. And I think you, without both, it's impossible. Um, you, you do need both. You, you need to have something yeah. for both crowds. And like my go-to for the past—I don't know—maybe year, year and a half. I've been traveling for the past two years, just doing as much as I can, going to see as many places as I can, and then experiencing as many places with different people. Because I've been learning techniques, what I do and don't like. I, I'd rather go and use your four hundred dollar piece of equipment, find out I don't like it, instead yeah. of buying it and hating it. So, what I've gotten good with, um, I love my dowsing rods, and yeah. for a long time they didn't do anything for me. But I've become much more in tune with myself and mm-hmm. my, you know, budding abilities, for lack of a better term, because I still don't understand anything, but. They work for me now, but I like to use those in conjunction with like an EDI plus or a static dome or both so that when those things are going off and my rods are talking, what more can I do for you? You know, can I get the ghost to serve you a beer or something too? Because this is all I can do for you. But I've also stopped trying to impress anyone else. I don't do it for anybody anymore but myself. I just want my personal experiences. If I have something bum rush me, I don't care if it's on camera because I know what happened to me. It'd be great if I got it on camera, obviously, but I don't stress about that anymore. I also found that over the years, I wasted so much time staring through a lens, trying to capture everything that I'm missing everything going on around me. Mm-hmm. And even with the advent of the body cameras and all that crap, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't bother because I don't edit. I'm the laziest ghost hunter on earth. I will not edit anything. <laughs> I, hate, I hate editing. I hate evidence review. Like you want to film a documentary? I'll be on, on camera. I'll do everything for you. I'll be the dancing monkey, but I'm not doing anything behind the scenes. <laughs> See, I'm like the opposite. Like, I love ghost hunting, and I was like, well, the only way to show my evidence is learn to edit, and it's like kind of a a hobby in itself now. I love editing. I'll film my son's baseball games or football games, and I'll try to edit him into these dynamic little videos. And I'll, and I'll film you our, should be editing uh, our show. Right? Yeah. We, just filmed, we haven't filmed in a while, so we just filmed this weekend. I've already got so much going. Oh, my God. Um well, this, this, I think that's it. You either love editing or you don't. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so I like that. Like, it's the best way. So I always tell this story. The first piece of thing evidence I ever got that I thought was good enough to share was an EVP from the Stanley Hotel, mm-hmm. and I posted it, and I just got beat to death by everybody. Like, <laughs> you have to show a videotape of the recorder. You have to show the room. You have to show the moment that the recorder was picked up. You have to prove how many people were in the room. You have yeah. to have the birth certificate of everyone in the room. So you have to have the shoe the size of everyone in the room. Like, like <laughs> it was just like this list of rules that random people I didn't know gave me that debunked my absolute badass EVP that I know is real. Um, that's still the best EVP I ever got. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, well, now I got to do that. I got to film everything. I got to have my hand. I got to have the building. I got to have this and be like, boom, fuck you. I got it. There it is. I filmed exactly. it all. Like, uh, I think that's why I like editing and filming. Cause I like to like prove that we're doing the work, I guess. That's mm-hmm. sort of where I come from. Um, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Everyone has a, pl- a part to play. So that works out perfectly. Well, I'm kind of more like Bridgewater Triangle is like one of my favorite things to hear about. Like mm-hmm. you grew up there. Like, can you like tell me some more awesome Bridgewater Triangle experiences? Um, shit. So a few years back we did a, um, I don't know if it was Halloween, if it was, it was a Halloween type event, regardless, but it was, it was in October. We did a live stream event. Um, it was all, it was a bunch of different local paranormal groups live investigating different parts of the Bridgewater Triangle at the same time through um, a local radio station. Oh, wow. And um, I was out with my former group. We went out into what's called the Hockamock Swamp, which is the epicenter of the Bridgewater Triangle. And Hockamock is a, a native word. I, I, I want to say it has something to do with the word hell, like entrance to hell or something. And I should know better. I'm sorry. I, I, I've let everyone <laughs> in my area down. Um, but this swamp is the largest body of water in the state. It's 16,500 acres or something like that. And it's all mm-hmm. like dotted and spread about. So it's um, it's full of lore. So we were out there. We were live streaming. And we were having a lot of odd sounds. Like um, I don't want – I'm not a huge cryptid person. I've had experiences with what's called puck wedgies, which I'll get into after this. This doesn't tie nice. to these. But um, – Obviously, I've never seen Bigfoot. No one else has either. Um, but if it does exist, which I think it could in some fashions, this whatever the sound was didn't make sense. It wasn't an owl. It wasn't people. It was just, what is this? And another point in time down down a stretch of the path that we were walking on, we saw two red eyes at about three feet high, and they darted into the brush. That was creepy as shit. Um, wasn't red eyes, not red. eye shine. Yeah, no, not not like the golden, you know, light shine in like a deer's eyes. They were red. Oh wow! Um, oh, and wow. you know, we I went running up after. I was with a couple of girls at the same time, so they weren't really. I was leading the charge, of course. Um, <laughs> no offense to anyone, <laughs> but we uh, there was nothing there. Like we ran up after, there was nothing there, and but one thing that we were able to con- kind of figure out in one area. There was high tension wires going overhead and that was making the melmeter go bonkers. So yeah. I think a lot of people's experiences out there could be attributed to that, you know, cause you're creating yourself a fear cage almost. So could yeah. that been what was doing that to us? Maybe, yeah. but there were still some other experiences that did not make sense out there. So, but also with those high tension up. wires given off the EMF, it could be causing activity. Also true. Yep. It could be manifesting it. Yep. Yeah. Did everyone see the red eyes or just you? No, we all, the three of us did. Yeah, so. And it wasn't through video. We were just, you know, we, we had our cell phones. And they got those shitty cell phones back then, too. But we were just out with our cell phones and we were able to see it. It. It, was, it was a common experience. It wasn't mm-hmm. not just one yep. person. Yep. Well, it was all three know. of us. So it was it was pretty interesting. That's, um, that would be, to me, more likely EM, high EMF manifesting something or allowing something to manifest rather than affecting all three of you in exactly the same way. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. I more attribute like the overall claims out there to possibly be due to the the high EMF. But again, it's all theory. Um, And the swamp is huge. Just happened to be the area we went in was near the high tension wires. Um, But have you guys ever heard of puck wedgies before? Tell me more about puck wedgies because my wife's family lives in Ohio and they've talked about them before. So puck wedgies are elemental spirits. They were never human. And they were actually... Um, oh, interesting. Kind of born out of necessity, for lack of yeah. a better term. And they actually originated in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, I believe it was the Wampanoag tribe. Way back when, when the tribes were scarce and they needed assistance, they kind of gave birth to these things ma- magically um, to help them out. And as time went on and population grew, they became less and less needed. So these things became mischievous. They're almost like yeah. workers. They, they, they're very mischievous and, and borderline dangerous from reports. I've never had an encounter where I felt endangered, but these fuckers creep me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've experienced, I've experienced them four or five times in my life. And, um, they're I about I'm crossing them with melon heads. 
So for what how I how I've seen them out of, I've never seen one full on. I've seen them out of my peripheral a couple of times. Critters. You know that big yeah. ball furry critters, something like that about 2 to 3 feet high. What are you looking around to see if you got one in your room? Oh, I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the best that's the best explanation i can give people because people can kind of recognize it that way they don't always look that way again it's an elemental spirit so yeah it, it can appear however it over. wants yeah yeah uh it's in the other room i'll show you when you come out here fair enough fair enough well, well <laughs> these things cause mischief like i said so about three or four different occasions i i had one kind of tailing me and i don't know why but I saw it in my gym one day. I was when I work out at my gym by myself. I kind of dance around like a lunatic because no one's around. I can do what I want. I got my headphones in. I'm kind of just vibing between sets. And I went to turn left, and I had this sensation, and I thought my daughter had come down because oh, wow. there's something standing next to me. And I went like this because I thought I was going to hit her, and I was like, "Whoa!" And she wasn't there. And I was like, "Okay, that's weird." It was about the same height. This was years ago. Another time, I caught it in my kitchen, out of my peripheral, just like a blur, of scurry. Another point in time, I did see it in my gym, and it looked like a tumbleweed roll out of out of the side of my eye, like like just like as far to your peripheral as you can possibly pinpoint. You just see it. And I was like, "What was that?" You know? Yeah. So I didn't understand what it was at the time, um, but again, growing up around here, I'm out in the woods and stuff all the time. But yeah, the best experiences I've had with them are at a location called the Oliver House in Middleborough, Mass. Okay. The Oliver House is a known haunted uh, location, hotspot. It's owned by the town, and they embrace the fact that it's haunted. And all the money raised goes right back into keeping the house and reno uh, renovating it. It was built pre-Revolutionary War, and it was built by a loyalist. Um, ben Franklin spent time in this house. This house oh, is cool. absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorite places. The people that run it are fantastic. And there's acres of woods out behind it. So a couple different times... We've gone out there in the woods at night, and I have just as many experiences in the woods with those things as I do in the house with the ghosts. So, I think I remember your live from there. Yeah, you had, a, you had that picture, and I, I saw that I circled something for you and sent it back to you when you sent me some footage or something. That was a puck wedgie. Yeah, that was an experience with a puck wedgie. Yeah, so that was the fir the first experience I had with them. So that at that point, it was myself, my daughter, who was she must have been eight at the time. Um, she's been investigating me since she was like seven or eight. And yeah. it was me, her, and just one of the guides. And we walked out. And as you walk out the path through the woods, you get to a um, New England's dotted with farm walls, which are basically rough put together walls of rock that they used to use to just keep the cows in and stuff. So you get to a break in this farm wall and you go on to more land. As soon as we crossed over that threshold, all the energy felt different in this area. Yeah. And it felt kind of uneasy. So as we're walking, we get a little bit further and we're all kind of like, eh, you know, we're half a mile from the house now. We got to we got to head back. And we felt like we were being watched on both sides. And these things are known to work in, in groups and pairs. And what they tend to do is they lead you astray and they try to trip you. Or if you were walking up to a cliff, they push you. Um, rumor has it they love strawberries. So a lot of people will bring strawberries as, a, oh. as an offering like, hey, man, don't bother me type of stuff, which I've never tried. I love I think, that. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool, right? That's great. So as we're doing as we're dealing with all that, you know, we we felt something and heard it. And that's I think that's what you had circled in the woods was we yeah. heard something running and so, you know, let's just let's get out of here now. And we're turning around and I'm in the back. The two girls are in front and as close to my heel as you could get without giving me a flat tire, something stepped and a branch broke right behind me. And I'll tell you, my butt fucking puckered. Like, I was like... I remember that footage. Yeah, I was I was scared. Yeah. I was like, and I darted around. That's when I darted around, and that's when you were able to capture that thing for me. And the, so that's, that's the exact moment it happened. And then I was like, I'm good out here. Let's just... Like I was like, my daughter, I'm just pretending. Like, oh, she's, we got to protect her. I was like, I'm scared she is. I just want to get back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last time I was there out in the woods, um, uh, it was just me and my friend Kenna and we walked out same, same, same thing. Every time I go past that farm wall break, the energy is just different and wow. we're out there and we're walking and we get same thing. We get pretty deep out. We went even further and we're like, all right, you know, so it's kind of turn around and walk back and same thing. You feel, you can feel eyes on you. And yeah. you never know. It could be deer. It could be anything. But it just doesn't. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't matter what it is. You're being watched by something. 
And as we're walking, things start coming out of the trees, like, like big ass acorns, like Jurassic Park acorns, things you've never seen in your life. And, and wow. there's no wind or anything. And they were coming down as if they were being thrown. Like one thumped at our feet. And I was like, what the hell was that? And you look down, it was like a, on the walnut, but maybe like a chestnut or something. And like harder than just gravity. Right? Yeah, it was way harder than gravity. It, it was like, wow. it was like, Hey man, we know you're in here type of thing, but it came straight right. from the treetop. It didn't come from the ground or anything. We're like, all right, enough's enough. So we're walking a little further and off to my left, there's this little like area of like little short pine trees growing, little scrub brush pine trees growing. And the, both of us see something run through that shit. It's about two to three feet high. And now I'm telling you, this thing was bipedal. It wasn't an animal. It was on two damn legs. And you yeah. know what it looked like? You know when the predator's invisible and you see that? that that's what it was. What? And we saw this and it ran about 10 feet in. And you see the branches going like this as it goes in. And then the, the thing you could just see, feel and see the little energy looking at you. And I was like, yeah, I hate it out here. Like, I don't even want to think about this. Like, we just kind of like. We just booked it back to the, the house, but that was <laughs> that was the coolest. That experience sounds that so cool. In those woods. And I I haven't been back out there yet, just because I haven't been to the house since. But every time I go out there, I spend time in the woods. They they cool remember and out there. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's why we a lot of us do this stuff, right? I oh, want yeah. to be scared. The, so it sounds well, cute. Give them little strawberries. <laughs> one of one of the best things about cryptids is cryptid stories can be like one offs or these. Like things you cannot explain, and like ghost stories are always ghosts, but cryptids like can be anything. Like mm -hmm. I have never heard of anything like that. Watching yeah, these, these, these things are bizarre. Oh my gosh, uh, that's wild. So, like, would you consider that one of the most haunted places? Uh, in the your opinion, house itself, or, or like the Bridgewater Triangle area? Bridgewater Triangle. I, I'd say we have a we we'd have a run for some money over here. Yeah, um, I do. At the same time, though, I'm I'm a skeptical believer, so I have to really see a lot okay. of things line up for me to believe everyone else's stories when it comes to this stuff. I know that the Bridgewater Triangle documentary had some stories in it that weren't necessarily the truth. Um, they might have been bent a little bit. It's the place where supposedly the insane asylum was burning down, so so they wouldn't burn. They let all the patients out, right? And they went into the woods, and they're still there. Have you ever heard that one? I've not heard of that one, no. I don't think that that's one of them that goes to, like, crazy men that live in the Bridgewater Triangle that a local insane asylum was on fire. So to keep everyone from burning, they let them all out. And they're all still that in the Bridgewater Triangle. I wish that I, I, <laughs> <laughs> so having, uh, having grown up in a super haunted area, uh, is there somewhere outside of your area, like a bucket list location you have not been to yet? I mean, it's not like I, yeah, I, I have places. quite a few bucket list locations. Um, like in this country, um, I was able to do some last year, which I was really happy with. This country, I still want to really see. Uh, and even if I don't get to investigate these places, just going in, photographing and being there is, is enough for me at this point in my life. I don't, you know, because you can go hunt during the day. Too many people don't do that. Like, yeah. People get up in arms like, oh, Eastern State Penitentiary doesn't allow go paranormal anymore. It's like, yeah, but you can spend 12 bucks and you walk around for eight hours on your own and you bring mm -hmm. your equipment and you're ghost hunting. I do it every time I go there. Yep. And we have all kinds of activity. It's like it's pretty simple things to do that way. But um, I'm hopeful to get to Alcatraz this year when I'm out that way and the Winchester Mystery. Those are two very high on my list. Um, yeah. Alcatraz does a night tour, which I just read about, which. Yeah, they do. That's awesome. So. Well, Al Alcatraz. <laughs> If you go in the morning, if you take a morning tour, you can stay and come back on any boat. So oh, you yeah. can you can just spend the whole day there. And the tour is just the prison and back to the boat. But there's a whole – like you can hike there for the day. There's mm -hmm. ruins and all kinds of stuff. So That's good to know. Spend oh. the day in Alcatraz. I bet if you, if you miss the boat, you can hide out and spend the night. Oh, I'm sure they'd be real happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> a national park I'm, I'm hiding out in. <laughs> Alcatraz yeah. is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, um, no, that's, that's, that's high on my list. Um, I'm trying to think of some other places in this country. Um, Winchester, too. That's a good one. They don't like a lot of filming, but I hear they're – I've always heard the last few years they're going to open up those back cabins for rent mm -hmm. so people will be able to stay on the property, and then you can explore the outside of the house, but – that's been a rumor for probably like four years that the back cabins will be 
available. I, I called so that. many times in one year that they would answer and say, oh, hello, Mr. Atkins, and no, the <laughs> cabins are not available yet. Uh, <laughs> and they never will be. <laughs> I don't think they will be. Um, I was I was bummed out because of COVID and everything. When we were going to try and do the Queen Mary, I wish yeah. we could have done that because um, that's out of commission now, right? It, it's still closed up. Um, but they're, kind of, they're getting ready to reopen it. It's in kind they're of limbo as far as I can tell. Yeah, it, yeah. it seems like a kind of an up in the air type of thing, and that stinks because that was on my list too. Um, Queen I Mary's go, great. Well, the pro the problem is it's going to sink. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let the paranormal people come in with some money and put the money into fixing the exactly. shit. The amount, the I guess the amount of the amount of money it's going to take to make sure it doesn't sink is more than they more than it can generate. It's astronomical. Well, but I remember I saw some. The city's going to save it. The I think they attach giant uh, helium balloons to it. They are. They signed a contract over the yeah. next few years to make the renovations for it. But the Queen Mary, so you could just put it in a dry dock somewhere, though. I say, but it seems to be right where it sits. They could, you know, weld it to giant steel pillars or something. Yeah, that, keep that's it probably there. Do. <laughs> well, it's still technically floating there. They say it's mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's so old. They think if they try to move it, it'll crumble. Yeah, yeah. It's so big inside. It's bigger than you imagine. And I remember when the first time we went there years ago, they go, if you hear something, we're having a raccoon problem. There's about <laughs> 300 raccoons in the underbelly of the Queen Mary, and we can't find them. Wow. Um, no, they it's ghosts. Cool. They just yeah. used raccoons as a cover. That is I guess there were some raccoons got in and were breeding and eating the rats and just spreading like wildfire. Um, <laughs> and then they had rat raccoon hybrids. Yeah. Turned into Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of places out there I want to see. I just want to go to as many places as I possibly can. Thanks for coming, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There he is. Yep. Hey, okay, back. Hello? Are you yeah, back? I see yeah. you. I hear you. We see we you. We see you. You see me? Yeah. Yep, we do. Not now anymore. <laughs> happening. There you are. Hell. Why? Can you hear us? What's happening, computer? Come back to life. This happens I hear every you. time. Steven, it's your question. I know. <laughs> Don't make well, me I can't, ask it. I'll my ask screen it. went black. We can see. Yeah, we can see you. I don't know what's happening. We can um, see you. All right. Just keep well, going. For the sake of moving along. Uh, <laughs> What's the most terrifying experience you've ever had? Uh, minus the one in my truck. Um, yes. That you haven't told us about yet. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> probably the most recent one I had was at the Detroit 6th Precinct um, in lovely Detroit, Michigan. That's where I'm from. Oh, I'm glad you got out. <laughs> <laughs> I like Detroit. I'm actually going back to Detroit this year. It's a, that's a cool city. and it, it's, it's, it's definitely the city itself has improved. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's very unique there. I was like, people like, oh, it's, I was like, dude, I gotta go down Eight Mile and all these things. Like, I gotta see Detroit, and um, it was interesting. We can see you, Stephen. Now that nobody, now that nobody lives there anymore, it's a really great city, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the I'm Detroit back, Six Precinct, ghost town, so um, to speak. You there, Stephen? You all right? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. I don't um, know. This computer just shut down for a second. I don't, this damn ghost is probably a I demon. I gotta keep dude. the mouse moving or something. <laughs> it's a demon. It's always demons. <laughs> That's great. But uh, Detroit Six Precinct is actually um, right where the Detroit riots kicked off in the 70s, or late 60s, early 70s. It happened right in front of that station. And oh, wow. This, this building has like some of the darkest history I've ever read about in my life. And the owner, Ed, um, unfortunately, he passed away last August. Um, and he was awesome he was all about preserving this building and bringing it back he wasn't a paranormal guy he's an it guy he bought it as a server's building because it's all concrete and keep his servers cold and he couldn't keep people working in there because everything was haunted and everything was scaring the workers out so the walls and the six precinct were bleeding basically were and um <laughs> so this place just had this history it, it got so bad that the the city itself came in and fired the entire police force at one point because it was so corrupt um that's so detroit all right yeah, that's, that's Detroit. And the last known use of the building was in the 80s. It was for like the SWAT unit. 
and the basement had a has a shooting range in it you got 10 cells up on the in the main floor cell block with a drunk tank at the end auditorium on the second floor and the night i was out there it was hotter than hell it was like 95 degrees outside and it was just as hot inside all you know the batteries are like basically melting nothing's working so i had a friend who was watching the live static feed that they have um and he said hey there's something going on in the cell block you know um well i'll preface this i'll, I'll back up a little bit since whatever i'll tell the story steven's all beside himself over there so i'll keep <laughs> the viewers over. entertained um Prior to this, I was down in the basement at the shooting range um, with a, with uh, Chicks and Spirits, a bunch of different gals that I'm friends with, um, and we were do they were doing an SD session, and I was sitting there with the rods, uh, asking questions, and I could the, the energy in the room was really off, and there's a known spirit there, Billy, who doesn't like women, and I could tell by what was going on it was him, and so we were asking questions, getting answers, and I asked, I said, you know, were you a rapist? And I got, yes. And I said, you know what? You're a piece of shit and I have no respect for you whatsoever. Nice. Like I don't provoke unless I'm in a place like that. In a place like that, they don't deserve respect. So I'll do what I need to do. So once I did that, everything in that room changed. And through the, the SB7, one of the girls was listening. She goes, get out. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go upstairs and, and good luck to you all. And so I went upstairs <laughs> and that was, I was like, all right, Billy doesn't like me. We've made a bad first impression. <laughs> So later on that night, I'm, I'm now sitting at Command Central trying to get my batteries to work. And that's when I got the text from my friend. Hey, there's something going on in the cell block. Go go check it out. I was like, okay. Now, no one else is around. There's a couple people downstairs. Other people are outside because it's so hot. I do get scared all the time. I just put on a brave face, especially when there's a camera, because I don't want that side of me to show. I do this because I want to get scared. And I love getting scared. But So I was like, all right, I'm going to go down here in, in the cell block. And I bring my rods. And I'm standing in the middle of the cell blocks, facing one row of them. The drunk tank's down down my right. So I started asking questions. And in the cell in front of me, in the back corner, I could see the manifestation of like a shadow. And it kind of comes forward to me and then just dissipates back into the shadows. I'm like, okay, so I see you. You know, you gotta let me know you're really here though. Down the hall, I see like a soccer ball size orange, I mean, a uh, gold, energy orb just go across and, and that was new to me that was one of my oh, wow. new tricks new parlor trick i didn't know i could do and i was like well okay <laughs> so i'm seeing it. i said well let me know you're really here using the rods are you really here yeah you know then i hear a bunch of footsteps in the drunk tank so i go down there to make sure no one else is investigating and there's no one in there then i hear the footsteps back where i was just standing oh, so wow. now i'm like all right dude come on what are you what are you doing? running me around here you know i don't know what you're doing but i'm getting tired of this game you're going to have to do something better than that if you want me to get out of here. So I'm standing in the same spot to my right in the drunk tank, in the doorway. This massive black shadow appears, is in the doorway, filling the door frame, like six foot something door frame. And this energy rushes down the hall towards me. I see this thing coming at me. And it's not like, you know, big ass trash bag, but that's what it looks like when you're freaking out. And it just comes and, and it goes through me. Holy and shit. It's this cold rush. And I, I mean, I power walked, I power walked out of that room because like, I knew the camera was right there. I knew people were watching. I was like, yeah, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go outside now and get some air. And I didn't go back inside that night. Wow. Uh, that's that, amazing. That, that, that freaked me out. That was, like, that that's, was amazing. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. Why? When what you're seeing is like darker than dark mm -hmm. and it's that big. Uh, -uh. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a, this. There's things out there and I've always been some sort of a magnet for them. And I've had a lot of people tell me that I'm a psychic and I don't understand any of that. I've always been empathic. So I know I'm an empath and I feel the energy in a room. I can feel the energy shift. I can't see someone standing in the corner most times, but sometimes I can, I try to shut it off. Cause honestly, I don't want to do it. I don't want that. Yeah. I'm not ready for it, but sometimes that stuff happens to me and well, yeah, I welcome I mean... it. You know, I, I try to protect myself best I can and, and set my grounds, but this is why I do this because I want these experiences. Yeah. I mean, like for you, when I see you, the, the veil that you have around you is really thin. So you're going to be messed with and you're going to see things and experience things a lot easier than other people. That's a good thing. Cause that's kind of what I'm, I want. You know? I'm sorry. I keep cutting out. I don't know what's happening. Today's probably streaming something in 4k. 
That's probably that probably <laughs> every kid in the house is on an iPad. Um, oh my gosh, uh, what did I miss? I, that was a pretty good story about a full. Ah! <laughs> You're still with us. You hear me? Yeah, yeah nothing is changing on our side. We can see you. Do so you see me and hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll go. I'm blind, I guess. Uh, that was a pretty amazing story to hear a full shadow figure pass through you. Like that's. That is that, bad. That, yeah, that was, watching, that was. You don't have a very aggressive investigation style for being the tattooed Mike Tyson of the paranormal. You're still very respectful and relaxed. Mike um, Tyson of the paranormal. He's well, a it, badass, it Andy. He's a badass. <laughs> I um, do. Um, I have said amazing. to people before, like on events, I'll be like, "Hey, I apologize. I'm not like when I investigate. I'm not the same as I am on camera. Not investigating. Like, I actually investigating is like the one thing in life I take seriously." Yeah, um, I still have fun with it, and I'm much more loose than most people. But I actually take it seriously. Outside of that, I'm a total goofball menace and just enjoy living. So, but now yeah, I, said, I, I want to be respectful when I do this. But yeah. now you investigate with your daughter. Do you ever? Um, I asked uh, the what the paranormal. Do you? I know I used to investigate with my wife, and I would be kind of half concerned for her at the same time. Um, because there's always the real person element, but mm -hmm. are you ever concerned with having your daughter there that you kind of have to protect her first? Um, or how does so, she handle investigation? So I've never taken her anywhere I haven't gone to first. Okay. Um, that's my first that's rule. My, um, yeah. I only, I actually just about a month ago took her to the Conjuring House for the first time. Um, because... You know, people, first of all, I think I'm a shit parent if they take them to, to the Conjuring house right out of the gate because people think <laughs> this place is full of demons, which it's not. But, um, yeah. you know, I wanted to make sure that things are good there. And the place is haunted as hell, but it's all, it's good spirits. There's nothing bad going on there. Yeah. Um, she has some sort of abilities too. She doesn't understand any of it yet either. Neither do I. And she, I think a lot of it, she likes spending time with me and I embrace it. So if that's what you, if you want to come with me, like she loves going to the conventions with me and sitting at the tables and, she doesn't talk to anyone because she's extremely introverted, but she still comes and she likes being a part of everything and she'll do lectures with me. So she, um, she likes the, all the aspects of it. Now um, she does the same thing as I do. She has some crystals that she believes in things of that nature. Um, she wears a necklace. that has got a, I forget which crystals on that thing, but regardless, it works for her. Yeah. Um, she had an experience that kind of changed her. She was, it actually was, shit, what was it? Two days ago. It was the 21st three years ago or four years, four years ago. I think it was, I just posted it on my, my Facebook the other day. It happened to her. Um, my ex had brought in some paintings, um, that she had found in the trash and oh. believed to be haunted. I have a ton of haunted crap and I call it enchanted because nothing in here is terrifying. And you know, the chairs aren't stacking themselves and all that stuff. It's just energy. It's energy that had nowhere else to go, but to these objects and here it now sits. Yeah. But these paintings were kind of weird. They were they were found in the trash all together. Two of them are in a similar style, and then the other two are more portrait style, like these old ladies. And they were just leaning on the wall in my kitchen. And we came home, and they were there. And I was like, oh, it's weird, but whatever. That's life. So we went to bed that night. Middle of the night, like I always do, I got up to take a piss. Go into the bathroom, and above the toilet, I see like a marble-sized white ball of energy doing figure eight infinity like this. And I'm like, Oh yeah, probably a car going by. There's no windows in my bathroom. But when you're half asleep and you got one eye closed, pretending you can stay asleep while you go to the bathroom, yeah. it's, it's whatever, whatever <laughs> solves your problem at that point. So turn around, head back to the bedroom. I glance out here in the living room and I see the damn thing out here doing the same thing. I'm like, yeah, it goes that car, I guess. And I went to bed and I got up the next morning and um, my daughter's got a loft bed. So she sleeps up high. So I said, hey, how'd you sleep? She goes, oh, I didn't sleep well at all. I said, what happened? A demon was standing at my bed, at my ladder last night. I said, what do you mean? What? So she explained this all to me. And she said, oh, you know, he was standing there staring at me. And I tried to get your attention to wake you up. And you, you wouldn't wake up. And, mm. and and then I just rolled over in my blanket. And I just forced myself to go back to sleep. And, and she said, and I woke up later on. And I looked out the door to the bathroom. And I saw it standing in the bathroom door. It filled the whole door. It's just standing there looking back at me. Hmm. I'm like, good Lord. So I told her, I said, I want you to draw what you saw and I want you to draw everything that happened. And she drew these incredible drawings, which disappeared not long after that. 
What? I've never found them. My apartment is not big. I never found those drawings. Thankfully, I take pictures of everything, so I had pictures, and I still have the pictures of pictures. And but um, it looked like, and this was something we found out later on. Every man is some is this person that people dream about, and it, and it always looks the same to all these people. If you Google every man, kind of look like him, but her drawing had ten fingers on each hand, and it looked like one of the grudge Juwan type black-eyed demon people that's what it looked like it looked like a juan and it was a boy and an oval head black hair black oval eyes and she said it was saying things to her like it doesn't like the light it has to stay in the darkness um wow. she could hear it breathing in the bathroom and all these things and it's all it's it's all written down i forget all the stuff that happened but what i think happened was when i got up to go to the bathroom i think i saw an energy form what she yeah. saw in actual form because we have yeah. different viewpoints on life where kids are so much more in tune to it. I think I'm just shut off to it. And I saw the energy of it in the bathroom where she saw the form of it in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. really bugged her out. And it bugged me out because I felt real bad that that was brought into the house and then brought to her. And then obviously I have to live with that shit. So I didn't want to deal with that either. Um, so I went to a metaphysical store that I go to. I got some protection candles, all kinds of sage, Palo Santo, all that stuff. And I came and bombed this house. And I had, I was like, the paintings have got to go. I don't want these paintings in my house. So they're yeah. in the base. They're in the basement now. Um, I hate them. I don't like going near them. I, I have them facing into each other in a stack of two. Uh, I've brought them out of the house twice to two different paracons. Oh. And uh, people don't like them. I'll tell you, people, the first paracon, we had them all facing away from the wall so no one could see what they were behind us. And there was a psychic medium booth next to us. And she goes, can you move that that painting away? It, that, <laughs> it's really bothering me. And I said, sure. People read these paintings and they have all these different feelings and they're just like, they're, they're, they're not good. And I was like, that's probably why they're in the trash. And I've had, you got to get rid of them. I was like, not happening. Like, not happening. Like You can do uh, almost a whole investigation on those. Oh, yeah. Wow. There, there's been, uh, I'm, honestly, because it's my home, I'm scared to do it in my house. I don't yeah. want to spill some shit that I can't mm -hmm. put the bottle top back on. So, wow. Yeah. Um, I thought about it. I mean, if I had, you know, 100,000 viewers clamoring to watch my shit, yeah, but I mean, for 10 people, I'm not <laughs> like <it was. laughs> wow. All right, let's uh, That's to, shift, to shift gears a little bit. I know you have some unpopular opinions, but uh, who's your favorite uh, investigator? Do you have one? <laughs> Someone you someone who you enjoy watching. So I will preface this by saying I have not watched a paranormal show in probably five years. <laughs> um, but some of the people in the field that I really look up to that are you know big timers, we'll put it uh, probably John Zaffis. I, I, I've learned oh, I've yeah. actually I've learned a lot from John, and I consider him a friend. He might not put me that high up on the list, but we are <laughs> friends, um, and he's helped me a lot with haunted things over the years and. I can always reach out to him if I have a question. He's actually taken yeah. things I couldn't handle before and things like that. So he's way up on the list. Uh, Scott Grunewald is another one. I love Scott. Um, I got to investigate with him again. Actually, my daughter and I got to investigate with him out of Vulture City last October, and that was cool. We, we're probably going if you go back. I can't go this year because my freaking cousin decided mm. to get married in October. And I said, you you know what you're doing? And she's like, I know. She's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can, you Damn can it. Go, go to the convention, just give me a shout out or something. I was like, no, I'm not going to miss your wedding. Um, Vulture City was awesome last year. Uh, Jay and Maria, great people. It was a, oh. a great event. Um, we had a blast out there. They treated us very well. Because um, some conventions you don't get treated well at. Yeah. You know, like well, Las Vegas. Never, I've Center. never been to one. <laughs> so you'll either love it or you hate it. I, I would expect to make 100 new best friends in a day. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume that's not what'll happen. <laughs> well, it depends you on can. how much traffic it is. You just go in with low expectations, go to have yeah. fun. We already know some good people. We're already friends with Patty and you know, that's with Paraflix, we got Natalie Jones as our buddy now, so Yeah, I met the both of them out there for the first time back in October too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it is nice and I've like I've always liked doing it because it's networking. Networking is everything in life, especially in this field. And I've met a lot of great people that way. <clears throat> Now, like, I, I've never been to any Paracon. Like, well, how do you find your way to a Paracon? Because I've never, this is not one of my questions I prepared or anything. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like Paracons are full of people, and I never, um, 
I never go because I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm doing the job. So I don't want to go to a, a job fair for no, the job. I, 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 I do get that. Like, in, um, I honestly, I don't go to them unless I'm a part of it. Okay. Um, yeah. And that to the average person might be like, Oh, what a snot. It's like, well, I'm not being snobby. It's just like, if I'm not going to be a part of it, I don't need to be there. Like, yeah, that's sort of how I feel. And, yeah. Unless I had like some great friends from out of town that are never that's in right. that area. But like, yeah, you know, I'll swing by and see my friends. And I have done that before, but I don't get asked to do a lot of them in my area because I have de detractors around here. Um, yeah. But the guys up in Maine, uh, Parafest Maine, they take care of me. They're fantastic people. I would do anything for those guys. They bring me up every year. Um, but like for me, I got started doing them kind of like I was thrown into the deep end before I could swim, so to speak, like with yeah. my ex, we were at one, we were asked like last minute to be, you know, to be there for this VIP party. And then the, the guy running was like, oh yeah, you guys are going to do a lecture. I was like, excuse me? Like <laughs> on what? Like, I don't, I hate public speaking. I actually went down to the bar and started slamming drinks. Cause I have to, I had to be loose. I'm I different. I want to talk forever with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm great at it. Before I used to have to be like not drunk, but really loose legged. <laughs> and then and I, I, I did. There's pictures of me all over the internet with drinks in my hand, like doing lectures for people. But, <laughs> um, but it helped me, <laughs> you know. And and all is good. So we did a couple of those, and then locally, I help out anybody. I'll give anybody a hand as long as someday if I need the hand, I'm going to get it back. So. Yeah. I did a lot, and people would say, "Oh, you know, could you come out and do this?" Yep. You know, you want to do a lecture? Sure, I'll do a lecture. And now, because I basically just don't stop talking myself and, and I, you know, I have some cool stories. I get asked to come out to these things now and I've done a lot of them. I've, I've been, I usually, last year, Christ, I did five or six of them last year. Um, this year, as of right now, I'm only doing Parafest, Maine. I was supposed to go down to um, the Haunted Savannah Paracon this weekend down in Savannah, but I couldn't swing that this time. And I, I told myself after last year, I said, if you do these you have to get paid to go do them now um and i don't have tv credit under my belt so i can't yeah. be like hey you know you gotta pay me but my rule of thumb is if you're gonna put me on a poster that's gonna help promote your event you gotta kick in something yeah I, i'm not asking you to you know give me a full ride but at least offer to cover my hotel you know like little stuff well that's like that's an old rule from wrestling that is kind of the reason i don't go to paracons it's like <clears throat> once you become a worker a wrestler um, you can't ask for another autograph because you're yeah. supposed to be on the level, you yeah. know. So same kind of thing. You once you're a ghost hunter, I don't want to. I'm not going to go to meet ghost hunters. I would love to be invited. So I think that's what I've always done. Waited to be invited to one, but I've kind of heard like that's not the way to do it. Just sort of start going, and then they'll sort of see your value. So we're just going to go to Virginia City because it's so close for us. Yeah, uh, that might, that'll probably be our first one. Vulture City, I mean. Vulture City, I yeah, I know what you meant. Well, it doesn't hurt to reach out to some of these things, especially in your local area. Because if, if you can go to ones in your local area that's not going to cost you a fortune to go, like, to travel to or whatever, yeah. reach out and say, hey, we're not sure, you know, this is who we are. If you guys are looking for any lecture spots or anyone, you know, if you need anything, we'd be interested. That's how a lot of it works, too. Because a lot of, like, these conventions get so friggin' stale because they get the same eight or nine people that go to them. Like it's I've noticed that. <laughs> famous people that go to these events. And it's like, dude, I don't want to see this person again. This person's not even a nice, this person's a dick anyways. I don't want to see them at this con again. <laughs> and, you know, there are people that do these events that haven't been on TV in a decade and they're still being promoted as such. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's, there's thousands of us out there doing way cooler stuff. Just because we don't have a TV camera behind us doesn't mean that we're not worthy of it. But we're also not selling tickets because pe not enough people know about us. So yeah, yeah. you got to find your own way into these things. And, and usually reaching out is, isn't a bad way, but. Um, that's, that's sort of what I'm doing. I, I talked to Natalie about talking to Vulture City and telling mm -hmm. us we're available to do everything. And then we'll more than likely be there anyway. Um, and I've always thought about if I had to do a lecture, what would I talk about? And I would kind of do like talking about that EVP. Like, why do we make our show? It's because yep. to show you without the recorder there's no proof with mm -hmm. if i just hear a voice there's nothing just a recorder is no proof i have with a camera you don't know where i am you know and just ex extrapolate on yeah. why do we film you know um the, the lectures, if, you, talk. if you don't put too much thought into the lectures they flow better because when yeah. you have all these things yeah. in your yeah. mind that you need to do you're going to forget them all i i go in i freestyle every single lecture i do 
Yeah. Like I'll usually have a topic. And like when we went out to Vulture City, we talked, my daughter and I talked about those demon paintings and I printed out pictures of everything because I'm not going to fly with those goddamn things, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> and we passed out all the pictures to the crowd and we had a huge crowd of people like, it was, it was because of her, not because of me. Everyone loves my daughter. So yeah. we had 27 people watching our lecture. We had all the celebs in the audience walking out and I was like, dude, this is, is kind of cool. Like this is really cool. And they were so engrossed and it went so well. And you just feed off of them and you bring the crowd into your lecture and you, you know, you ask if they have questions and you kind of do Q and A's and things that people like that. It, it's yeah. more, engro it's more engrossing than I'll tell you right now. I've seen so many really well-known people do shitty PowerPoint things and I'm like, goodbye. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to yeah. watch a slideshow. This isn't high school. I'm not at work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about how you capture the audience. Um, but you, you know, you get your name out there one or two and it, it'll work out for you. And if Natalie can't get you in there, let me know. I'll talk to Jay and Marie for you. Yeah, any of them that like, if you talk to somebody that says we need some people, we'll all we'll all head out there, and we'll go to Maine, we'll go anywhere. I just just like the reason your talk would be so good. Everyone's thirsty for a new story, mm -hmm. um, a new experience, or a new telling. Um, and uh, well, unfortunately, it looks like we're running out of time for my wife to let me do this. So, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's a, it is a work night for me over here too. So I, I didn't even have a beer tonight. I'm like mad at myself. I wanted to have a beer. I was like, dude, it's eleven o'clock at night. I can't be doing that right now. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, for for <laughs> keeping you up so late. It's but okay. It's been awesome talking with you guys. All in all, what's like. what's the future home for Matt Warner? What's what's next? What's your goals? And what do you got planned? So what I'm working on right now is bringing two locations to the masses for uh, ghost hunt rentals. Um, one of them will be, uh, actually, I think they're both going to be available in April. And one of them is done, uh, I'm, I'm starting kind of an offshoot type of thing, um, Warner Paranormal um, Preservation Society. Oh, cool. And my focus for, it's always been this way, but now I really want to put more effort into it, is I want to do more preserving history because without it, we're not going to have these locations. So yeah. this building that I'm currently working with right now is on the National Registry of Deeds. It was built during the Civil War and it's insanely active and no one's doing anything about it. No one's using it for much. It's kind of falling, slipping through the hands of the people that run it and they need money. So I approached them and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. And I'm still trying to prove to them that we're not all a bunch of weirdos and we're not going to be breaking into the place and all that stuff. So I'm almost there. And once that one's on board, the other place I have is a private residence that a friend of mine purchased that I've investigated. It is haunted. And that's going to be a lot of fun to get that going. Wow. So I'll have those two locations within 10 minutes, cool. 10 minutes of each other on the South Shore of Mass, 30 minutes from Logan Airport, hotels nearby. It'll be no reason people wouldn't want to come out for the weekend for those. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a couple others in mind that once these get off the ground, I want to reach out to as well. And kind of I'm trying to create a network of research centers up here. Oh, wow. That'd be awesome. Um, that's that's kind of where my focus is now is I needed something to put passion back in this for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a lot of burnout and I've been getting stiffed and screwed by a lot of people over the past couple of years. So I've, I'm tired of all that. And I want to give back to the community and I want to make a mark and preserve some history. And that's what I'm working on right now. Badass. You, you, once coined, you coined a phrase that I think is a million dollar phrase once and I don't see how you don't already have a show with just the term paranormal pickers. I think you should totally I have, I have just pitched travel. That to, I have pitched that to so many different producers. That is such a great idea of going to antique places and yep. like, yep. I'll do it with you. If you can't find anybody else, me and you in a Jeep driving yep. around to antique stores. Well, Wait, what's the concept? pick out the haunted stuff i do this all the time in my free time so i'm curious what's the concept the, just... the concept is like american pickers but instead we we work for the crowd of people that we that we type in oh looking for haunted and creepy things and like yeah. funerary items and shit like that and my daughter and i we do that anyway same thing yeah like we're taking all the time looking for the weird stuff so oh my god that's awesome it had so many different facets to it, it had the family aspect because it would be me and her and, and and i had some producers take it pretty far but it's just falling flat if they're, you ever too scared, need... they're too scared for new ideas. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, that's what I always get. I always get when I talk to producers, they're like, well, what's your what's your twist? I'm like, none of the other shows have a twist. We're just right. badass. Like, you know. Like, you know? 
And then when I give them a twist, they don't understand it. I tried to pitch a show that was like uh, a face-off like show where we do character recreations of like Clark Gable going to the place where Carol Lombard's body was brought, you know, and seeing if Clark Gable could get evidence as a, a character makeup. Gotcha. And all they were like, so like face off, like, no, not like face off. Um, and then they, I could tell the lady I was telling it to pitch it had no idea what ghost hunting or makeup effects were. <laughs> and I was like, and this is the lady on my, my life's in your hands. Um, yep. the person that doesn't I knew she had shit. no idea. Um, that's so if cool. If you film though. some stuff I would and watch you don't want to edit it, well, we'll send see. me some paranormal pickers. I'll edit you a whole show out. Oh um, yeah, well, watch it. That's really cool. I'll get you I, a real. I would love to get that thing out there, man. That would be awesome because it's it's something we do all the time, anyways. It's when I first heard it, I was so jealous. It was like a stand up hearing a great joke. I was like, "That's the best idea." Oh, I thought God. it was too. I thought it was that million dollar idea. I was like, "Man, it's this going to be a show?" And it could air on. It could air right after American Pickers. You know what I mean? Like it could air on any channel. And you could like, I could just see you walking through like an old antique mall with a, uh, you know, a metal meter and like pushing an old lady out of the way and then checking if she's real, like Egon and then just keep going. Um, that's funny. Cause but, my daughter, she uses the Mel and she sweeps it like the PKE meter all the time. I'm like, you don't have to do that. You know? And she's like, what? I'm like, I just go for it. Yes, we have to, we have to do that. Um, um, I think that's our time, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank having you. me guys. Um, Nice it, to meet it was you. great to chat again. You as well. um, yeah, man, we got to get face to face. Yes, and we will. Um, we'll make that happen. Like I said, I think we're going to try to get out to Cali this year. That'll be our trip. And if I do, I'm going to hit you guys up, and we'll do some cool stuff. Yes. There's places like Pioneer Saloon we can book at any time, even though it's a little drive outside of town. It's a great location. Um, we'll put you on an episode. We'll we'll do it all. We'll be it'll be badass. Be I cool. like it. I like the sound. All right, you guys thanks for joining us. I got a right. places coming, so. Yes. Oh, I, my wife's always begging me to go to Salem, so we have to go to Salem and let you give us the tour. I'm only an hour from Salem, so this 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 is going to be a nice weekend trip for anyone that makes their way out here. Friday, Saturday, ghost hunts, Sunday, Salem, all kinds of goodies. Oh, my gosh. I love it. We'll make it happen. All right, brother. Keep it up. Stay in Hell touch. Yeah. Yes. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Later, bro. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow. That's awesome. What an amazing talk. Um, just a good dude. That's he's cool. Yeah, driver. I like him. Like, um, I he I think he would fit in any investigation we do. Oh, is just for like sure. another member. Um, thank you guys. I'm really tired tonight for some reason, <laughs> and my computer <laughs> monitor kept going out. I think it feels hot. Well, we my get we, feels we, we, we kept getting the spinning wheel of of reload yeah. on all of you or just me? Just you. you. Okay. Um, everybody, next week we have Two probably, shows. I would say, the biggest um, psychic medium on TikTok, oh. Miss Haley Michelle. Um, she has millions of followers. She is a sweetheart, a pure spirit, um, an investigator, um, and just she seems so pure and good. Like, she has such a good twist on the psychic medium kind of world um, to talk to her and get some of her perspective uh, and talk about TikTok. Um, HPD is no stranger to TikTok. We're doing good. They bought our new camera. So um, <laughs> yeah, but then, I think all that psychic medium stuff is bullshit. No, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to come over there and slap you. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get the groundhog up. Yes. <laughs> <Watch Yep. out. laughs> um, and that's next Wednesday. And you guys, Monday the 7th, we will be face-to-face, -face, camera to camera, with the Tennessee Wraith Chasers. Can you believe that? I'll be excited. Um, and then that same week, head of MUFON Field Research, Mr. Earl Gray. We're going to get some I'm so excited. stories. Okay. <laughs> and then the 12th, guys, I'm not going to say where we're going, but we are investigating on one of the biggest locations we've definitely been as the new crew. Um, so I cannot sad. wait. That's only two weeks away, you guys. Ah, I'm gonna I can't sleep. Myself. Um, <laughs> everybody watching, please like, subscribe, follow, 
all that good stuff. This show is brought to you by our Patreon. Our Patreon literally pays for us to do this talk show for you every week. Um, and we're bringing you, you know, huge TikTokers, UFO field researchers, and the Tennessee Wraith Chasers on top of people like Patty Negri and Steve Brote and Matt Warner, who you heard from tonight. Um, all the par I mean, so far, everybody we brought on has been a home run in the paranormal, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, all celebrities bigger than us, so that's that's pretty good. Um, you can only go up. Hey, maybe they'll start taking us seriously at some point. Well, it's been great to, to rub virtual elbows with all these people. But um, I think that's it. Like, subscribe, follow. Follow the link tree in our bio for everything. Get our new merch. Subscribe. Season 4 coming to Paraflix. I think that's good night, everybody.